Welcome to another edition of Sportswire Island. Joining me is the head coach of Tucker Guys Basketball, Adam Desgain. Adam, welcome. First and foremost, how are you? How's the family doing? Uh, we're doing great. I appreciate you have, having me on. Uh, just trying to stay sane and just take it day by day. Taking it day by day and, and, and in the sports world of things, uh, I feel like it's year by year. When I see you on court side and you're coaching and not playing, it just reveals how old I am. <laughs> I graduated <laughs> of 2008, and now you're the coach of the same team that you were setting records with uh, back in the early to mid-2000s. Uh, let's go back. Well, what's, the, what's the biggest difference for you between being a coach now and being a player then? Um, I think just, just not being able to put a jersey on on, uh, on game nights. Um, I still get to jump in and practice every now and then to, to show them that I still got it. But the thing I would do just to, to, to trade is one day, give one more game just to have fun to play in front of crowds, uh, to play for your school. Um, that's just the main difference. I'm still trying to keep the fiery approach that I had as a player. Um, I'm trying to, to carry that over just as the coach I am now. I remember your, the coach who you replaced was your head coach was, was Corey Brott. And he had uh, – he, when he ex talked to me about what kind of player you were, he described you as a gym rat, someone who's always in there working hard all the time. I'm assuming that's something you're trying to carry over to the players you now coach. Yeah, absolutely. Um, especially, it's been kind of tough, uh, especially last year uh, with the new gym being built and so forth. So we had a lot limited access to our practice times and things like that. But for me growing up is after practice, I'd, I'd tell my dad, hey, I didn't go to the gym, get some shots up on the weekends and things like that. So I just constantly just tell them that you got to stay in the gym, but not just during the two hours of practice time or the two hours that we have. It's got to be a lot more. What was the process like? And in, in, it's got to be kind of bittersweet for you because you have so many memories of, of game-winning shots that you've made at your home gym uh, compared to what it's going to be like a brand new gym, a chance to make some new memories. I think it's going to be great. Um, I keep counting down the days that, that we don't have to practice at middle school or we don't have to play another 26 games on the road. But it's going to be something that is good for Tucker that has been there for such a long time. And a lot of people on the um, outside, is they might not think that kind of Tucker is a, a great school because it's been around for so long with the outdoor campus and the older facilities. But um, I think we're going to have one of the best schools like around, not just for basketball, but for like, every other sport. Um, but these kids get to make their own memories now. Um, the sophomores that I had on the team like this year, they'll be seniors, um, be the first class to get to play in the gym. So they're going to kind of start the process. And you can always remind them, uh, say, hey, check out my old highlights. And we did have a guy <laughs> named Tim Legler that went to J.R. Tucker who kind of made it big at ESPN, and he was a exactly. star in the NBA. So you guys do have history on your side. Exactly, exactly. It's just older history. It, that's them, right. For the kids. That's right. That's right. How how do you how do you instill that mentality though? I know you said you you kind of show them you still got it. Obviously, you're a young head coach, um, and and also um, how do you jump into that role? Were there any any things that you kind of second guessed a, about yourself, X's and O's wise, or or did you just kind of take it day by day and say, hey, these these are the guys that I got, and I'm going to put them in the best position to have success? Um, I think I been blessed to to play for in college playing for Mike Rhodes who's now at VCU playing for coach Davis who's now the head coach with Bucknell um, my first couple of years out um, of college I worked for Ryan Stein who, when he was at Glen Allen I uh, worked for coach McKegg who's still there Andrew Blazer James River so I, I've been blessed to to learn from a lot of good people and take bits and pieces from everybody um, and kind of see what I have um, of course, we don't have the six, eight, the six, nine guys that kind of when I had when I played in college. So I've learned to kind of play with the stuff that I have. Um, but getting back to the 
fiery side, just showing them that I still got it. Um, I just show them how much I care. It's not just about basketball. I never forget the first day I got the job and we had the first workout. I simply just asked one of our players who graduated. I just asked him how his day was. Um, and that was the biggest thing that he took from it is that this coach, he cares not just about the basketball piece, but how I'm doing in the classroom, how my family is and things like that. Absolutely. But seeing, uh, going back to your, your year last season, I know seven and 15, not what you want record wise, but I personally experienced some of the games where the team would come out and, and it didn't seem like they had it all together. <clears throat> You'd get a little fiery on the, uh, during a, a, a timeout and I'd see a completely different team. So I know that they're listening to you. And then I saw some some games were one half of basketball. I was like, this looks like a Des Game coach team. I mean, they're they're outworking their opponents, they're battling for the boards, they're getting the rebounds, they're creating extra opportunities on offense by getting, you know, quick stops on D. Um, they're battling for everything, every loose ball, they're on the floor. And when you guys did that, I saw success. And when they let up, you see the results of the other, the opposite as well. Do, do you think that the kids, especially you were talking about the sophomores turning to juniors, turning to seniors, do you think they, they take some of those lessons with them in the upcoming year? I think they do. I mean, every single coach that we played against like this year, and they always said this, you guys play so hard. Um, we hated preparing because we just knew that you guys were going to go and bring it. And I tell my kids that, that's something that you can go in control. Um, the biggest thing, like this past 10 weeks, is with the last dance being on Michael Jordan, he said something, I think it was last night, that he, on, he was only concerned about the things that he could control. Um, we can't control that we don't have a 6'9 guy. We can't control that we don't have a 6'5 wing. We can't control the refs. Um, but we can't control how hard we do play. And when we did that for periods at a time. We were pretty good. We were in a lot of games, um, especially playing on the road. I mean, the one positive from this season, the first year, the only true road game, I think we won one game on the road. This past year, we won seven. Um, of course, those are the circumstances, but it teaches guys in all sports, it's hard to win on the road, like even at the high school level. And obviously, there's no live practices going on right now. Maybe not for the foreseeable future. How are you staying in communication with your team? Yeah, just kind of, just kind of checking in with those guys. Um, probably, I try to do it at least twice or three times a week, just send them some things that they can do. Um, but the big thing is, is they got to hold themselves accountable. Is we return six guys who have gone through the process of playing on the road. So hopefully that helps. Um, is it, they all tell me they're doing things, but I kind of wish I was there getting in the gym and things like that. Just because, just like you said before, I'm a gym rat. Would love to be there now. Um, but I know my wife is very happy that I'm home now with all this going on. Mine is too. Because <laughs> during the season, it's definitely a grind. I like to end with uh, this question. I've asked athletes this, and to me, you're still an athlete, even though you're a coach. <laughs> So I'll ask you the same thing. What's the one positive you take away from this pandemic was we tend to focus on a lot of the negative and what we can not do as opposed to the things that we can do. Um, I think I, I as, a, um, as a coach, have been able to kind of hit reset button. I've been able to kind of find different things that I can do as far as podcasts uh, from different coaches that are great from different college players with the last dance being on. I mean, if you're a true athlete, that is something that you should definitely go watch. Um, you get a lot of good things. It gives you time to go back and reflect, um, especially for me, the past two seasons, I'm still a young head coach. Um, and if it's good, I know a lot of things that didn't, it didn't work in the past um, that I'm not gonna do anymore. And I'm just excited because it kind of gives us a brand new start. Well, I think there's nothing but uh, up and up for the future, J.R. Tucker. Brand new facilities. Uh, you're getting some new players. You're getting some experienced players. And uh, here's to hoping we get ourselves a nice basketball season next, uh, next year. Yes, sir. And I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Adam right. Desgain. Coach Desgain now at 
J.R. Tucker High School. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you. Stay safe. All right, thanks, you too.